What's up guys, Jeff from Sorta Health here. Today we'll be talking all about in-home personal training or training clients in their own homes as a personal trainer. I got the idea to make this video from Chris McLoyd who left a comment on my last video that focused on starting out as a trainer. Thanks for the topic idea, Chris, I really appreciate it. Training clients in their own homes is a topic near and dear to my heart for a few reasons. First off, it's how I started my own business. Back then I couldn't afford a fancy private studio like I have now. Training clients in their own homes is something that's greatly contributed to my current success. In a lot of ways, it's the thing that's allowed me to afford what I currently have. We will be talking about how much cash I made doing in-home personal training, by the way, so stay tuned for that. Also, my first YouTube video was an in-home training session. This video is almost six years old. Unlike a lot of my other older videos, this one is still on my channel today. Training clients in their own homes is a little bit different now compared to when I used to do it, though. So what I want to do with this video today is share my thoughts and experience with in-home training. And after that, we'll discuss whether or not I think it's something worth doing going forward. All I ask before we get into all of that is that you consider tapping that little thumbs up down there blue and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. These things help the channel to grow and this channel is a free resource for all fitness professionals. Thank you so much for that support, everyone. On to the rest of the video. Before I get into telling my story, what are your thoughts on in-home training? Are you interested in training clients in their own homes? or not. Let me know your thoughts on in-home training in the comments. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. Anyways, let me briefly start off by telling you what this video isn't. This video isn't an in-home training session. I already have two of those on my channel. I may do more in the future, but those are enough for now. Even though I will be covering some of the do's and don'ts of running a training business, this video today won't go into the same detail as this video that I released last year. This video covered starting a training business in depth, and most of what was said there would apply to in-home training too. I want today's video to be more about my experience with in-home training and whether or not I think it's worth doing going forward, so let's tackle that. When it comes to my own experience with in-home training, well, the only place to start is the beginning. After about two years of training clients in commercial gyms and private studios, neither of which I own, by the way, I decided that I wanted to do some in-home personal training alongside everything else I was doing. I actually only really ever considered doing in-home personal training myself when another trainer I knew told me that they were having success with it. Even though at that point in time, that trainer had more experience than I did, I knew that if they could do it, so could I. So I went out and bought an adjustable dumbbell set. The Yes For All set I'm showing on the screen right now is literally the same one I used, by the way. They were pretty decent overall. The only thing that I didn't like about them was that they slowly started to rust. They still served me well for about two to three years, so I definitely got my money's worth. I also bought a mat or two, a stability ball, boxing gloves and mitts, bands with handles, and mini bands as well. I'll include links to all of this stuff down below in the video description for those who are interested. If you're not interested, that's okay too. Back to the story. Anyways, I kept all that stuff in my car for about three or four years, only taking it out on rare occasions. If I was going out on a date or something, I'd usually leave the stability ball and the boxing gloves at home, not that anyone would care, but that's what I did. At about the same time that I bought all of that stuff, I also built a website. I knew that a website would almost certainly be worth it in the long run. Having a website isn't necessary for online coaching, but if you're offering in-person services and that's going to be a main source of income, you'd be silly to not have a website. I built a very simple Wix website, which only cost me about 200 bucks a year initially. It's only a tiny bit more now. My thought process was that if this website helps me attract even one extra client a year, it will have more than paid for itself. Honestly, thank God I made that decision back then because that original Wix website has made me hundreds of thousands of dollars at this point. To some extent, even now my life revolves around it because I've upgraded it to my current website. Anyways, we're now back in 2014. I'm currently training clients in someone else's private facility for about 20 hours a week. I'm training clients in a commercial gym for about five to 10 hours a week. And I've also got everything ready to go for my in-home training business. Business. I've got a car full of equipment, a snazzy new website that's keyworded to attract in-home personal training clients, and a whole bunch of knowledge that I'm ready to unleash on some new prospects. Heck, I've even got liability insurance. Make sure you do get that before you go off on your own, by the way. I remember thinking, oh, those new clients will start calling any day now, a few weeks into starting my own training business. Well, guess what? It took quite a bit longer than that to get my first training clients working for myself. I don't think I had any interest or inquiry 
inquiries or anything for the first three months or so. And that wasn't from a lack of trying. Almost every day for at least an hour or two, I'd be working on my website, my Google listing, my social media, or something else related to my business. If I had a break between clients at the gym and I was off the clock, there was a good chance I was working on my own business stuff. I started to use the two client acquisition sites, Thumbtack and Bark, a few months into starting my own business. Well, really, I think it was all Thumbtack initially because I don't think Bark came along until after a few years of running my business, but you get the idea. I'm not going to lie to you guys, at first I thought Thumbtack and Bark were huge scams. In fact, even to this day, I still kind of feel that way. That being said, around three or four months into doing my own thing, I got my first big break. And it could be the single most important client acquisition I've ever been a part of. I signed on a husband and wife who wanted to do training three times a week, and they were serious. They also lived like two minutes away from my apartment and were willing to work with my schedule. Guys, I went on to train this couple for about five years. Some weeks went by where they would only do two sessions, and then there were some weeks where they had to travel for work, but overall they were pretty consistent. This couple was great to work with, and I ended up helping them achieve very impressive results. The husband lost about 100 pounds and got pretty jacked, and the wife lost 50 to 60 pounds and added some good lean mass to her frame as well. If it weren't for that couple, I don't know if I would have my house, my studio, or even this YouTube channel. Getting these clients great results really helped to build my confidence. I was still doing well in my other training jobs at that point too. I felt like I could do anything. Five or six months into training clients in their homes, aka running my own business, things started to pick up. I signed on another three to four clients, one of which I still work with six plus years later, just not in her home anymore. With these additional three to four clients and that couple that I previously mentioned on my schedule, in addition to my other two training jobs, I was fully booked. I was doing 40 plus hours a week of training at that point and I was making good money. My schedule was pretty crazy. I was working lots of weird hours, but it was worth it. In 2015, 2016, and 2017, the years where I was doing the most in-home training, I was making 50 to 70 grand annually, only doing personal training. At that point in time, that was pretty good money for a trainer. And almost half of that money was coming from my own in-home training business, by the way. Now, the reason I mentioned Bark and Thumbtack before was because one or two of my earliest clients, including that couple, came from these sites. Again, working with that couple early on is one of the things that made me successful, so I can't say that these sites slash apps weren't helpful. That being said, after those initial successes using Bark and Thumbtack, I never really got anything else out of them. By the way, I spent hundreds of dollars on Thumbtack, in particular chasing down leads, and I still never got any more clients from using it after my first year on my own. Luckily, my website picked up the slack early into my in-home training stint. After about six months or so, my website started to rank on Google's local search. If someone googled in-home personal training in my area, I popped up and usually first. I was somewhat meticulous for keywording my site for in-home personal training. It's not that hard to do that by the way. Wix and many other site builders have tools that tell you what to do. Also in many areas, there's just not a lot of competition for the keywords in-home personal training. So anyways, this new Google ranking helped me to sign on a few more in-home clients, which allowed me to reduce my hours working for other people. Being fully booked, with a good chunk of my clients being in-home clients meant more money for me. So after about three to four years of being fully booked with clients, some of them my own in-home clients, some of them clients in other facilities, I had enough cash saved to buy a house. I didn't have my eye on just any house either. I wanted a multifamily house with a layout that allowed me to live in one side of the home and train clients on the other side. After some time searching, I found the right house and I pulled the trigger. Now after I bought that house and started my first personal training studio, Studio, that's when I started to train clients in their own homes less. It became more profitable to train clients in my own studio than it was to train them in their homes. It was also just way easier. Driving to clients' houses, lugging around equipment, and dealing with all the other challenges of in-home training can be a drag. Also, you certainly spend some extra cash on gas and wear and tear on your car. Then there was also the time I injured my shoulder pretty badly lugging my equipment up a flight of rickety stairs to get to my clients' apartment. Those were some weird times. Don't get me wrong, training clients in their homes was totally worth it for me and I would do it all over again. That being said, training clients in my own studio was better in almost every single way, so once I had that studio, I did start to slowly phase out in-home training. I officially stopped doing in-home training when the pandemic started, but truth be told, I was ready to be done with it before then anyways. Even though in-home training had been great for me in a lot of ways, I was done with it and ready to to move
move on to the next thing. The next thing would be running training facilities. So that's the quick version of my in-home personal training story. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. On to the big question of the day. Is doing in-home training worth it? Well, based on my story, it's very hard for me to say, no, it's not worth it. I think for many of you, it's definitely worth it. And then I think for a good chunk of you, it's probably not worth it. It's probably about 50-50 to be honest. One mistake I made as an in-home trainer was not charging enough money. I initially charged just under a dollar a minute for my in-home training services. My price was low initially due to a lack of experience and confidence. I wasn't charging a travel fee back then either. So yeah, for in-home training, in the beginning, my prices were too low don't make that same mistake. I live in an area where there's an average to above average amount of income. In-home training is a premium service and you will need to charge a premium price. You will spend a ton of time and energy getting from client to client, lugging around equipment, etc. You'll also spend some extra cash on transportation, insurance, and other things as well. If you're in an average to above average income area where there aren't tons of in-home trainers already doing their thing, then it definitely could be worth it. As I've said, before in a lot of ways in-home training is the thing that made me who I am today and I don't think there's any higher praise I can give it than that so if you're on the fence I'd give in-home training a try maybe you'll find it as beneficial as I did for taking your career to the next level if you guys have any questions or comments please leave those down below I always love hearing what you guys have to say that's all that we have for today everyone hopefully you found the video interesting and helpful if you haven't already please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel because it does help the channel to grow and that does allow me to create more free content for all of you. Thanks for watching everyone and until next time, stay sort of healthy.